Susan Rooks joining us today. And so and Susan Rooks is here today. Randy. I got you. So <laughs> it, let's just back up just a second. Randy Wooden with Goodwill Industries, Northwest North Carolina. Teddy Burris. Teddy? Well, uh, Burris yeah. Consulting, LinkedIn Training and Coaching, uh, Google Workplace Training and Coaching. And thanks for joining us on Lunch <laughs> Conversations with Randy and Teddy. Uh, uh, this could be a good show, be a lot of good conversation. Yeah. And I apologize, it's a little fumble, but we're in gear to, right now. I think we're in third gear now, Randy. Forth, so. And Elder Elder Law Care is our is our uh, is our corporate sponsor, so we're thankful for their assistance to help make the show a, a reality. Susan Rooks joins us all the way from New England. Susan, you've been here before. I loved your topic last time, so I'm going to turn it to you. You are the grammar goddess, and we're going to find out how that happened and a little bit about you. But why don't you introduce yourself and, and take it away as far as uh, well, hey. Teddy. It was a year ago, April 4th of 2021. Oh. Yeah. And also, by the way, if you have questions, grammar <laughs> questions, you have punctuation questions, you have questions, put them in the chat. Teddy's going to keep an eye on that. Yeah. We'll work those in as we can. So let's get started. Susan, good to see you again. Thank you. I can't believe you asked me to come back. <laughs> Very grateful. Thank you. <laughs> It's a, it's a test, Susan. It was. I was one of the most popular shows we've had. And quite honestly, well, it really was. Plus, one of the most fun shows we had. Yeah. Well, fun is yeah. my middle name, to be honest with you. Even though grammar is not the most fun topic you will ever no. run into. You asked me earlier about the title Grammar Goddess. I worked with yeah. Fred Pryor seminars back in the day, 25, 30 years ago. Wow. And I majored in teaching American grammar with them. I didn't realize that it would turn into my life's work. But somebody there, when I was answering some questions, we used to have chat rooms, only they were called telephone landings and we would call yeah. in 800 number and all of that. We answered, and I was answering questions that I was looking up for the answers. Somebody said, wow, you are such a goddess. You're the grammar goddess. And I thought, self, hang on to that. That is a cool title. Even if I didn't believe I was a goddess, I loved the sound of it. And you fast forward 25 years and the company is Grammar Goddess Communication. And it's more than grammar because it is more about how well we communicate, how poorly we might be communicating. And not because we don't have brains, Teddy or, 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 or Randy. We have it because we weren't paying attention to a lot of this in school. Who on earth when they were 12 or 15 or 20 thought they'd care? about something that when they were 30 or 40, you couldn't know that. So I simply help people remember or relearn some of the finer points, as you mentioned, mm -hmm. it does matter in some instances, maybe not all, but in some, it's really important to know the difference of how to spell a word, how to use a word, and oh, a little bit more about American punctuation. Sure. There's a lot to it. And we'll cover a lot of different topics. Two of the ones that we're going to make sure that we hit on they somewhat overlap, I'll, I'll say, but I, I'll, I'd rather have you define them. We'll call those filler words and crutches. So let's let's hold that thought for just a moment. But I want to go back, and you touched on the why question, I think, kind of as part of your, your answer. But for you, I always ask the why question, and I can tell you're passionate about this stuff. Was there a certain point at which you said, hey, this is, this is something I really, really enjoy, and I'd like to make this my, my living? Yes. And again, I'll go back to Fred Pryor seminars yeah. because five years of international work really brought it. It taught me a lot. Yeah. I remember them asking me to teach a budgeting course and having a guy get up in the first 10 minutes of my first day and say, lady, you are the worst presenter I've ever seen or heard. You screwed that up and he stalked out. And I thought, oh, OK. We kept going. We filled the day. I called back to Pryor and said, hey, this isn't really a good topic for me. Is there anything else I could do? And they said, sure, American grammar. OK, I thought I knew more than I did, which is true for a lot of us. Yeah. And about a year into that topic, nobody ever yelled at me. It was really very helpful. A woman walked up to me at the end of the six hours. Think about that. A six hour, three in the morning, three in the afternoon. I really... And she gets, dear, I really enjoyed your presentation. I made a few notes in the workbook. Thank you. This was delightful, yada, yada, on and on. I thought, oh, 
I have my class. I have my expertise. Yay. Yeah. I went up and I looked at the workbook. It bled red. Mm. Oh. I can't tell you how many errors I made either speaking or copying what I thought was right. She was an English teacher and she was good. So yes, did I learn from her? And did I realize I had a passion for this? I spent the next two or three weeks going through every book I could find on the topic saying, what on earth was wrong with what I said? Oh, shoot. Look at that. That's not the rule. Okay. Mm. And now I know pretty much, but it's American grammar. And I think that's a huge difference. Mm -hmm. People understand the distinction about it. I don't know a lot about European grammar. I don't know a lot about other countries' version, but I'm pretty good at this one. And <laughs> let me just throw this out. And this is a, something that I'm, I'm sure you would agree with, and both of you would agree with, that, that once you affix the title grammar goddess to you, now all eyes are on you. Yeah. Every sentence, every word, everything else. So let me just throw a, a disclaimer out here. Susan is human. Susan is human. She is not a robot. She will not say everything 100% correctly, especially in real time. It's one thing to sit down and edit a book where you can go back and go back and go back over it, over the written word. Um, so we're, we're talking this topic in the spirit of trying to be helpful not to say, beat the chest and say, we're perfect. And if only you rubes could be like, we were, the world would be a better place. I just want to throw, my mom was an English teacher. And, and so I was brought up with the speaking properly, but I know I also use filler words and crutches. And I'll say things that are probably inappropriate at times. Teddy will really? duly, no, duly note those, I'm sure. And it'll be in my uh, performance review at the end of the year. <laughs> Anyway, let's, let's dive into this thing. What are the, the definitions of filler words and crutches? And it's funny because I hadn't considered those until recently when I was working yeah. on a transcription of a podcast and realizing how many words I was cutting out of the podcast before I even worried about the grammar. Yeah. So I went and looked up online and it's very simple. It's the words we use to fill the space when we don't know what we're going to say. And our brain goes, hang on a minute. You don't know what you're going to say but you got to keep talking so that nobody will think you don't know what you're going to say. So you can use words like, um, and like, and okay, and right. And how about that? And oh boy. And all these words that give you the sense you're speaking and you are, mm -hmm. but you're making no sense whatsoever. Mm -hmm. You're not mm -hmm. helping. <laughs> Very close. Mm -hmm. You're not helping anyone. You are filling the space. I think our mm -hmm. brains are really frightened when we don't speak when there's a pause, we might be seen as, she has no idea what she's doing. I hate to tell people, but we have, it's worse when we just go, yeah, uh-huh, well, wait a minute, um, 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 yeah, um, um, yeah, um. <laughs> Reading a transcription mm. is enlightening to say the least. So if you go on the Toastmasters website, they have an entire area where they talk about crutches and filler words because, that's what they're in the business of doing, helping people speak more professionally, to take mm -hmm. their time, to get their point across, and to be seen as the expert in whatever it is they're talking about and not a joke up front. And it's not because we're stupid. We just don't, we've never been taught that. Our so brain that, thinks quickly. Our brain thinks quickly. And sometimes <laughs> the words don't always keep up with the brain speed. No. Hence the gap. So that is, if I'm understanding them, those are the, the filler words, the um, the uh, like, oh yeah. boy, uh -huh. right? What are crutches? Same thing. We're leaning on them. It's words we lean on, basically. It's, this, it's, this, it's another term for the same kind of concept. It's okay. simply words that we're using to get to from here to there without silence. Mm -hmm. yeah. so Let me throw in. Oh, I was going to throw in, if, if I could draw a distinction that, that the crutch is something that we use more of. I was on a, and the person will go unnamed, but I was on a presentation of, at a, at a, in an organization and about every sixth or seventh sentence ended with right. Right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> that was this person's go-to word. There were other words that were kind of in there, you, you know, um, uh, uh, 
but the right, that was the crutch. That was what this person leaned on specifically to make a point. And so to me, anyway, that's, those are the differences. You have a question from there, Teddy, was no, there something? I, I got a, uh, but Susan made me think, that, yeah. you, know, you know, I, in my, uh, in the business, I produce videos all the time and YouTube videos all, all day long. And I've discovered that when I transition from one part of the video to the next, I always go, so <laughs> every single time. And I've, and I've discovered that fortunately I have editing capabilities so I can scrape out the so, but it seems like every transition for me, I don't know if it's a crutch or just a filler, I've got to start talking with so, and as my brain goes, let's talk about this next topic. So thank you, Susan. I'm, so I'm going to work on making that better. <laughs> I don't think it matters exactly what we call it. It's the reality that we use it to keep the conversation going. But for my world, I don't look at conversations the same as I look at presentations. A conversation is going to go back and forth very fast. It's a few people, we're talking, and I'm not listening for those words in a conversation. I'm learning, I'm looking for meaning. What are you trying to say to me? Where are the emotions? All of that. But in a presentation, Yes, it's meant to be friendly most of the time, but it is still meant to be informative. And that's where all of these words get in the way. And until I saw the transcriptions, I honestly wasn't aware of how everyone does it, including me. Hey, um, hey, uh, hey, um. Hey, um, hey yo. <laughs> so what, 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 um, I think it was Wayne, let me say. Yes, Wayne asked, and is it appropriate or maybe when is it appropriate for me to let someone know that they are using these filler words and crutch words? Is that, is that appropriate to do that? Not unless you're asked. I don't think it's fair. I mean, if somebody were to say, what did you think of my presentation? Ah, opening. I liked a lot of it. And, I would, and I'm not doing the sandwich thing, which good thing, ugly thing, good thing, because we all know what that's about. I really liked it. A couple of ways that I think you can make it even better. And that's one of my favorite phrases, by the way, gentlemen. I don't want to say you could make it better. That usually lands very badly. People think, sure. so it wasn't very good. I know she said better, but she hated it. It sucked. Oh my God, she hated it. Our brain goes into hyper, find the negative. I've learned over time and somebody else taught me this. If you can say to somebody, you know what? I have a couple of ways you could make it even better than it was. And people think, ah, okay, let's go for it. And they don't know why. You're seen as a positive coach versus a miserable, you know what, trying to beat them down. The word even, such a simple, it's a four letter word, but it's a pretty good one. And I like being able to say that, uh, Teddy, which is to your point, if somebody were to say, you know, how was it? Really, really good. I liked a lot of it. A couple of things even better would be, whoa, most people float with you and allow you to say that. Seems to work. My, um, uh, a couple of people posted in here, Wayne Crawford said that Toastmasters is a great organization. I'll tell you one of the things that I learned from my grammarian at the Toastmaster uh, club I was in, and she, uh, people would say, oh, your presentation was excellent. And she would look at you and burn a hole in you with her eyes because she would say there is never been and never will be an excellent presentation. Hmm. Maybe good, but there's yeah. always room for improvement. That was like oh, Simon yeah. Cowell, man. Simon Cowell on the, whatever show he's on these days, you know, where he tears them apart when it was really good. And yeah. wow. So, so perfection is, is impossible. And I get that. Yeah. You know, something you mentioned earlier, and I just threw the, you know, one on, on purpose there is tone inflection and, and such if you've got a boring speaker then those fillers and crutches tend to i think stand out more but when you have an engaging speaker like teddy i mean teddy's a good speaker I, I enjoy listening to teddy and he didn't pay me to say that but i enjoy listening and i enjoy listening to you and when i think when we are dialed in to the good mm -hmm. in what you're saying versus sitting there going this guy is boring. Yeah. Plus, he says, you know, every fifth word. My goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that whole thing. I, Hold on. <laughs> tone, inflection, yeah. all of those things, those matter. Do, do you think those matter how we speak as much as the words that we use? Let me ask you that. Yes, they do. And that's the difference yeah. between speech and written. 
because ah. until I saw the transcription on the screen written out, I don't know that I would have been as bothered by some of what I know these people have said mm -hmm. than I was when I read it and thought, dear God, eight thes in a row, yikes, versus if it's an engaging speech, yeah. I'll hear it, but it won't be a focus. And it won't probably matter unless, of course, it's every third sentence that goes da 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 da. At some point, I'm probably going to hear it. But there is a huge difference between what is written, which is a different kind of communication. Mm -hmm. I have another question for you, but unless Teddy, you wanted to work in anything from the the chat area. Okay, so go ahead. We'll get back to it. Good. We'll get back to it. So you've, you're talking about conversations versus written text. Hmm. Conversations are live. They're organic they're not scripted they're us warts and all yeah. so that's out there the written word and i do this when i write my column in the paper and i i somewhat do this intentionally so correct me if if you feel differently on this oh <laughs> <laughs> i don't think i needed to offer that up but how can i improve let's put it let's word it that way you said well this is really really good it could be even better if you i purposefully will use filler words. I write as though I'm speaking in, in many cases, as though the reader is there in front of me. And not that I dumb it down, but that I, I don't bust out the thesaurus and I'm not William F. Buckley and George Will and, and all these characters that use words like this. No. I try to make it simple in conversation. And I've had people give me feedback on that. It says, you know, I really like the way you write. And I, I was just doing it because that's a, what I knew to do. What are your thoughts on that? How, how people write, the audience involved, I guess the inf informality, if that's a word, or, mm -hmm. infor is, or informalness. I don't know. Did I invent the word there? Maybe. Well, you might have. Hey, what I, do you think about all that? You're making some good points there. You really are. Because it, conversation is different. It just is. A lot okay. of what I end up working on are books. Some of them are non, uh, oh boy, the brain just quit. Filler words. The brain did just quit. They're nonfiction. So they're aimed at sometimes a very specific audience, right. a scientific audience, or an audience that's aware of the topic in a way that <laughs> I have no idea about. That's a different kind of writing. If you're mm -hmm. writing to help somebody learn something, or you think something's funny, or it's meant to be between you and people on a personal human yeah. level, I'm okay with an occasional filler word. I'm not okay with finding 18 of them in a row, blah, 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 blah. But an occasional write, I use that term sometimes in my own writing, but I'll do it once or twice on two pages. <laughs> I'm not going to do it in every single one. But yes, writing is going to be about the audience as much as anything, which is a question I ask every new author to me, because I am an editor. And I'll ask them, who's your audience? Are they brainiacs up here in your world of whatever it is okay mm -hmm. i'm gonna to have to do a lot of work just to figure <laughs> out what you're writing about but if they're me yeah or like me you're not writing the way i could read it and that's not going to probably help you as the author so there's so much that goes on about who is going to read it and what will they know from the get-go yeah, yeah. Get -go. Teddy? G -I -T yeah. hyphen G O from the get-go the get-go <laughs> Get, get it, get it. it. There's, a, get? Uh, there's a lady I met. She's in our area, Randy. She's in Winston, uh, North Carolina area. She did a presentation on writing and she told us about a, okay. a website where you could take your written word and it <clears throat> would compare your written, your blog post, your article, whatever that written content was. It would compare it to New York Times and the Wall Street Journal. And it also did this comparison too. It would measure how well you wrote your content for the same audience, New York Times and Wall Street Journal. Do you know, and you may or may not have heard this, Susan, that content that's written on the Wall Street Journal, now take out the fact that lately editors have been failing and disappearing and they're not enough out there to do the right work. But did you know that the articles written on the New York Times are written for a high school student, hmm. they're not written for brainiacs or executives nope. or people with high education. Like they're Teddy written, Burris. They're, yeah. Yeah, they're, not written, they're written for high school students so that, you know, 10th or, and I, and I don't have exact numbers of this 9th, 10th or yep. 11th grade for them to understand. Yeah. 
and that's a good it, it's really worth knowing again who is your audience yeah. because it's very simple i read i can't read books anymore by the way i'm pretty sure very few editors can without wincing and finding a word that's 18 syllables thinking okay i have no idea what that word is <laughs> I have no idea where that word, where, why, why would you use it in a detective novel? There isn't a detective out there who's going to use mm -hmm. this word that has that many syllables. Mm -hmm. But I also, and you've probably seen it in the mornings here on LinkedIn, where I do, that's a word. I have a, a, a four day, see, I did uh, 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 three times. I have a meme out there every morning for four or five mornings in a row of a word that I have found somewhere. It could be a crossword puzzle, could be in a book, could be something someone wrote mm -hmm. to me and I thought, looks familiar, but I don't think I could define it. Because I want people to learn the fact that there are words out like there, but most of the time we're not gonna use them in regular communication because the other person is either gonna look at it and think, what? Or look at us and think, why? Why? Would it be, why? <laughs> I mean, what? It's yeah. yeah. Audience is huge. Not to dumb it down ever, but to be effective and say, okay, this group, generally speaking, is my audience. And it might be men, it might be women, it might be mothers or fathers, or, or it could be anything. But know who you're writing to. That's right. Yeah. Sure, and that that's important. Speaking with Susan Rooks, the grammar goddess by way of Massachusetts, in. Um, and and a uh, I, I'll call it a, a dormant Red Sox fan or is kind of a passive. Let's call it passive. Passive. Yeah. I mean, passive. certainly I'm going to support my own local teams. There you go. Passive Red Sox fan. And uh, if someone so anyway. throws her a T-shirt, she'll wear it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Right. <laughs> Find it. Go ahead. <laughs> Hey, uh, we've got some questions that are hanging out there. Teddy, do you want to knock out any of those uh, yeah, let's, let's for the break? Mike's before I do the 30-minute yeah. spot. And so uh, yeah. our buddy Mike, uh, Susan, says, how do we apply these guidelines of writing to our resume and cover letters? And are they supposed to be audience-specific? I, I think you just spoke on that. Well, they should be specific to the point where if you're applying for this job, you're going to use language that that job generally would be using. I mean, if I'm going to be a car mechanic, <laughs> good luck with that, Susan. I'm going to be trying to write in the language of a car mechanic. If I'm an editor, which I am, I'm certainly going to be using words that support what it is I say I know how to do. Uh, I would say in most resumes, you don't want to use multisyllabic words because many people are going to read it and think, oh, come on, get off your high horse. Come on, get real. So it's, again, the human factor. High school, more or less, if that's what you're applying for. If you're applying for a PhD thing, all right, up it a little bit. Yeah. If you're applying for this, maybe down a little. There's no absolutes here. It's generally speaking, will you reach the people the way you hope? to and if not find somebody else to read it for you somebody else who at least knows a little bit about it and says hey this sentence those those paragraphs work really well this one could use a little extra love yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, grab, we'll grab one more uh, uh ellsworth uh wants to know and ellsworth hasn't told me uh have they been on the show before that's the first time i've seen that name on the screen um um so Ellsworth says, is there a difference between our speech and a presentation in the context of how we put our words together? What are your thoughts, Susan? Absolutely. I mean, what, what you're chatting here. Now, I'm being careful <laughs> because we are talking about filler words. And, and I'm keeping and track. I'm, <laughs> I'm sure you are. Um, there's an um. But in conversation, I'm not that crazy. I mean, I don't even mind when people say me and John went to the movies. Yes, my body kind of goes like this. Oh, dear heaven. No, don't do that. But it's in the context of a conversation with somebody I'm enjoying. Yes, I hear it. I can't help it. But it doesn't govern how I see that person unless I hear it all the time. If it's a presentation, that is something we should be thinking about ahead of time as I did, I've got a whole page of notes taped to my screen, just in case we hit those points. Presentations are very different. They're meant to showcase something about us, whether it's us as humans, us as whatever we do for a living, us as volunteers for something. So yes, then I think it matters that we take some care. 
I don't show up to these conversations with my buddy and prepare my conversation beforehand. I don't. I mean, yeah. it's just, it's a conversation. It's, it's just, but when I go deliver one of my 50, 60, $70,000 speeches, I at least practice once or twice. Yeah. And I have this just for notes to remind myself of what I know I can say if it comes up, because otherwise my brain is just like anyone else's. It's over in the corner hiding, going, yeah, good luck. Good luck with that. <laughs> you can't find me. What were we talking about? Yeah. Hey, before I forget, I know we're close to the break. So uh, but in, I want you to give a shout out to your your puppies, or your little dogs. They've been really good uh quiet attendees in the background so you've got a couple little favorite little pets that uh, that you had last time yep i have gibbs who's a miniature pincher yep. probably um he was thrown from a truck years ago and i got him as a rescue mm. i know there are some very nasty people in the world and i got him with another dog you might have met abby my little italian greyhound no she wasn't alive a year ago you probably met duke i got the yeah. my little chihuahua duke who's also a rescue i'm his third family and i know why they gave him up and quick story, he was bitten by the house dog in family number two, badly, and hurt. And I thought, oh, you poor baby. Oh, Dookie. Oh, baby, baby, baby. And then he attacked Gibbs <laughs> in the crate. And Gibbs has PTSD. There's not the slightest doubt. He probably had a very bad puppyhood. And he's in the, co in the corner going, Ugh, Ugh, Ugh. and I thought, oh, you little yeah. nasty dog. Now I see why you probably got bitten because the dog you attacked in the other house mm -hmm. that yeah i don't think so uh, it's gonna oh, happen love <laughs> them to pieces and you know what i'm finding when i'm yeah. on zoom i think my puppies think this is a tv show or, or the equivalent in their mind that it's not real because mm -hmm. they've never barked they're in the crates closed but they've never really interfered unless i let them run free so it is a real show, by the way, Susan. This is real. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is live. And speaking of live, we have a sponsor. We're going to talk about yeah, that and we'll get right. into some more questions for Susan. You're on Lunch Conversations with Randy and Teddy. And our special guest today is Susan Brooks. And uh, we are grateful that the our, our sponsor right now is the Elder Law Firm out of Greensboro, North Carolina. <laughs> The Elder Law Firm specializes in helping you serve the family that you want to serve the way you want to serve them and, and uh, cover those responsibilities that you have for them in the context of the right estate planning and elder law planning and, and it's, uh, you know, preparing through that retirement phase. So if you have family you want to help and you need some ideas or insights, reach out to the Elder Law Firm out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Their phone number is 336 three nine six four five five one and let them know that randy told you to give them a call back to you randy good deal yeah. hey susan rooks is our guest uh, back for a second time you were here about a year ago and so had a great time learned a lot we're going to learn some more in this next half hour so if you are watching and you're watching us live and you have a question or comment put it in the chat teddy will take care of that and Ellsworth said, this is my second time. I okay. do remember that name. So, yeah, Ellsworth, thanks for joining us today. More to come with Grammar Goddess. So let's let's move. We, we've talked definitions of filler words. We've talked crutches, written text versus conversation. So now we're going to move into when are these things. Well, how's that for a descriptor? Yeah. These When are these things most recognizable or obvious to you in written form written form only because i've i've moved into helping a couple of interviewers mm -hmm. with their transcriptions and transcriptions it's interesting to read because you think okay sure that's what they said and then you read it and think wait a minute i have no idea what that means oh wait if i take out the 18 ums and the 18 likes and the 27 thes I might find the meat of it. And this is where it really shows up because I think we, without thinking about it, we expect more out of what we read. It's something mm -hmm. that has been gone over. It's not spontaneous. Well, the transcriptions are very spontaneous, but when you find a book, sure. you figure more than one person had to have seen it. Probably a whole team read it. So how come there were so many errors in it? Well, maybe they don't know American grammar. Maybe they don't know this. Maybe they really weren't 
a whole good team. I don't know. But my expectation of something written is that it had time for people to look at it and to check it and to see, does this make sense? Is it written correctly? Do we even have any idea what we're supposed to do with the semicolon? Probably not. And all of that, I know, don't, don't use them, folks. All of that, though, in speech, speech is so much different. It's up here, to here, out. And it's almost like it's a slide on a, on a, a playground. <laughs> Boom, and you're gone. Or something through a goose. So yeah. let's... <laughs> I got to ask you this. So now let's let's move this into the work world and talk about emails. So our emails, do they fall into that written, you need to eyeball this thing before you send it out? And also, I guess we can talk texts because that even to me is one degree down in terms of formality. Yeah. But if it's, we're talking business now, we're not talking friends, Teddy and I text each other, blah, 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 whatever. All right, that's fine. But if, if, if this deals with work, yeah. Give us your thoughts on how structurally sound should an email be, at least an internal email. External emails, I get it. You want to make sure you put your best foot forward, I would hope. What about internal emails? Here's my thought on all of yeah. that, Randy. Um, all right. If we allow ourselves to get careless, that will be our way of doing it going forward. If mm -hmm. we think it doesn't matter for this person, whether I use me or I, or whether I use him or her, or whatever it is the issue, I may do that going forward. And if there might be a time when it's going to matter a lot. Like I'm going to write to the president of the company. Do I remember how to do it? Not if I haven't been practicing it, doing it correctly. For a lot of folks, writing is not an art and a science. They don't even know what they're doing. The last time we might have had a grammar lesson, we might have been 12 or 15 years old. Mm -hmm. We didn't give a rat's rump about any of that. We were 15 or 20 looking around the world going, wow, there's wow. so much out there. Let me at it. You can't know when you're a youngster what you're going to need when you're 30 or 40 or 50 or whatever number. You can't know that. So I have no issue with someone like me going, hi, how are you? And I'll do YA to a friend. Because mm -hmm. I know what I'm doing. This is my world. Mm -hmm. But if somebody is in another world where grammar and all of that isn't an easy mm -hmm. topic, isn't a prime topic, I'd say learn how to do it and do it right, yeah. even with friends most of the time. Because the one time you need to, mm -hmm. you'll know how to. It's like the mm -hmm. Oxford comma. Let me just bring that one fun one in. Mm -hmm. oh, boy. The Oxford yeah. comma is nothing more than the one that comes. I know you're going to kill me. Uh, in an, items in a series, she's red, <laughs> yellow, and green. Fine. The word and, if there's something in front of it like that, you generally would have a choice. Do you want the comma or not? But when you look at some of the fun memes out there, I invited my parents, comma, Superman and Wonder Woman, and no comma. What you're reading is my parents are Superman and Wonder Woman. With the comma, you understand parents, Superman, Wonder Woman. And people mm -hmm. say, but I don't want to use it. I said, fine, don't. But please don't come back and tell me you got sued. And there was a lawsuit three years ago for something like $18 million because someone didn't use the Oxford comma in a situation where it could be misread. misread. I don't say it had to be, but mm -hmm. it could be. And a smart attorney came in and said, excuse me, yuppa, 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 yuppa. That wasn't clear. Therefore, you owe them all that money. Man, Teddy, we're especially, especially if you we say, missed out on 18 million bucks. Yeah, man. it probably wasn't that much, but it was a lot. It was millions. Ugh. And it was crazy I, when it's just a comma. But my job is this if you put it in all the time as a habit, yeah. no one's coming back at you. That's no one, because go. the three things are the four things are separate. Clearly, how did you not know that? There's no fight in that. But when you leave it out, the way the world goes today, you can sue ambiguity. Anything. A ambiguity, yeah. Ambiguity. Teddy, yeah. Um, for yeah. Elder Law, I'm quite sure that the people who are sponsoring this would be right with me because yeah. they know that's how life goes. Yeah. And so you you talked about um, um, you talked about the the style that we write in chat, the style that we write in text messages to our boyfriends and girlfriends and moms and dads, etc. And then the style that we write when we're writing to the president of the company. 
Yeah. And so one of the things that I've discovered the best works best for me is I don't deviate significantly in my style of writing a text message or an email message. Now I'm, I'm not uberly formal in my text messaging, but I don't use a lot of that. What's it called? The, you know, the YA and the, you know, write at you, you know, I don't use a lot of those acronyms because I don't want to get in the habit of using those and go send Susan Rooks an email about mm -hmm. a business opportunity and use that type of language. And yeah. furthermore, as, as Todd asked this question and Dean asked this question, how do you create a habit of writing good grammar? The way you create my answer, I'm going to ask Susan for her answer. My answer is practice every single day. You should always be practicing writing better and get good at using the backspace and the delete button and rewriting it. Susan, what's your, your message in that context? Well, find somebody like me. It doesn't have to be like me. I mean, I've worked with a guy once whose mother was an English teacher, but she wasn't a grammarian. There is a difference. And he wrote in, mm. in he wrote something was inedible in a headline, God help us all. If you're going to screw up, folks, don't do it in the headline. It's tough to digest. <laughs> and he you. meant to write inevitable, but inedible was a perfectly decent word. Spell check was happy with it. He had no particular reason to not. And I read the headline and said, what did you write? He said, my mother passed on it. She said it was fine. Uh, <laughs> well, it's a perfectly good word, but it's not the one you meant so yeah. if you can find some people who are in the world of English or grammar or whatever, or whatever by the way, mm -hmm. I'm saying English because it's the only language I speak. I honor those who speak any other language and can manage to lump along in this one. But if you have problems in the language you use mostly, find mm -hmm. somebody else who's at least good at it and say, does this make sense? Have I screwed up? Have I made some kind of a real big error? On my LinkedIn profile, I've got three things that we do a lot. We write manger, well, we meant manager. Um, and now, of course, I'm doing it um because my brain just went absolutely silent. Teddy's got one. I got one. Pubic yep. relation. That's the the other one. We write pubic, and we. But here's the here's the deal. I'm going to teach somebody, everybody, this. When you're looking for it on a Word document or anywhere, what you type in sometimes is you'll type the word public, and you say, "Let me find all my publics." How did I miss pubic? You didn't ask for it. If you're going to check on two words and you know you sometimes miswrite one mm -hmm. and it's a perfectly valid word and spell check will let you get away with it because it's not going to check your grammar, then go for the other one. Check for public if you want to and then check for pubic. Check for manger and check for manager. Check for the one you mm -hmm. don't want to find. And all of a sudden you'll see it lighted up and think, son of a gun. I did it again. It happens. Yeah. All right. So, and I, I will true confession here, Teddy. Um, and I even do it when I'm making notes for my, uh, the crack research staff, mm -hmm. even if it's a note to myself, or if I'm entering information, we have a new database at Goodwill and, and I'm entering notes based on a conversation I had with a, with a client, I will go back and correct any misspelling or any, even though nobody sees it, but me. And I'll tell you, my cohorts, they've since retired, Susan and Ruth, mm -hmm. we're birds of a feather. And the three of us were three word nerds, grammar geeks, you name it, whatever alliteration you want to use here in, in rhyming. But we would, we, we could be your, your siblings. I mean, we just would, <laughs> and we'd look at something and go, that's not right. Or what do you think of that? So, uh, and I miss those two because we had such great times over something that a lot of people would just go, Really? It doesn't matter. And and I would argue it does matter. It does matter. It does matter. And when people dismiss it saying it doesn't matter, I almost want to kind of shake them and, and say, well, so, you know, what if I were to show up with no shirt on? I say, well, it doesn't matter. It's, I got a T-shirt on. It's fine. Well, yeah, it does matter because people see that. And in a professional environment, those things matter. And they the do. People, it, the yeah. And, and if you can correct it, correct it. If it doesn't, what does that say about how you think about your audience? And I'm on my soapbox now, but if I think Teddy doesn't matter and I can be as rude and crude and unprofessional as I want to be because it's only Teddy, what's he going to think of me? 
and I control yeah. the that a, Is that a fair? Yeah. I mean, I, just, I, I owe him some level of courtesy, respect, and professionalism and, and vice versa. And so that's, I, I, I kind of miss that. And then if I sound like an old man, uh, oh on the, on the, <laughs> on the next, to me, next to me, you're a baby. So hush up. <laughs> Reality. But, yeah. The impression people yeah. get, they don't usually question. If they honestly think that you're a jerk, then unless there's a major reason to get mm-hmm. out of that thinking, that's their vision of you. Yeah. Um, it kills me when I see other people in my world, the editing, the proofreading, the writing, anything in that world, allowing comments on LinkedIn or anything else to be less than perfect. Because mm-hmm. if, if somebody's hunting for someone like me, you know, I'm not, I'm not perfect. I often see a, my own comment and think, "Woo! thank God they let us edit these things. Go back. Brr, okay, get that letter right. Right. I care enough to make sure that to the best of my ability, anything public is going to be what I want you to see because I may never get a second chance. So Todd, hey, Teddy. Asked, Todd yeah. asked this question and, and it's a good question. And I don't have the answer because I, 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 I subscribe I do. to it. I subscribe to a tool called Grammarly and Grammarly helps me, yeah. but it only helps me. Yeah. And, and I don't always agree with Grammarly. I often argue with Grammarly. I'm like, bull. But Todd says, so what's a good way to make sure we're using the right word effect versus effect ensure versus ensure. Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you suggest? Memorize one of them cold absolutely know what affect means or ensure and in, in assure learn one of the pair now it's tough when there are three <laughs> there 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 but many of them come in pairs so let's say it's and it's its is the possessive pronoun it does not have an apostrophe but when it's short for it is or it has darn it it does and unfortunately even grammarly which is by the way is better than nothing the yep. problem is it can't say to you, writer, what were you trying to do here? Mm-hmm. Help me understand what you want. Because I work with a couple of folks who use Grammarly before they send me what I'm going to be editing, yeah. luckily, which it does help. It does help. But I have read a few sentences where I thought, wait, whoa, 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 stop. What? A- that went through Grammarly? The mm-hmm. word, however can be used in several different ways. And Double comma, on single it, comma. Or a semicolon in front of it, yeah. depending whether it starts a second sentence in the same sentence. And it did in that one, and it didn't put it there. And it's like, kill. <laughs> and it's too bad. If you don't know, you don't know. You take your best shot. I'll honor people who at least use something like Grammarly. It's better than nothing. The problem it, is... It's not perfect either. Well, and and again, on Todd's point, and you mentioned this too, Susan, you, you don't know what you don't know. And when when you don't know, you don't even know. Sometimes, and I, I remember being in classes in college and some in high school where I didn't even know what kind of question to ask. That's how lost I was. I, I didn't even know where to start. Yeah. And so you just kind of pick one yep. and go with it and hope your 50-50 you know, uh, luck goes your way. Uh so yeah, there are there are some things. I'll put in a plug for one of our other guests, Susan Rez- uh, Sarah Rosinski. I was just going to talk about oh. her. Yes, Time out. go for it. Uh, Time out, Randy. Yeah, so are you using your Yeti? I am. Is it getting too loud? Let me. It's way too loud. Turn your turn your game down a bit, man. Please. All right. I I hadn't touched anything earlier, so there must be maybe when I pounded the desk like it was at uh, Nikita Khrushchev did that back in uh, back in the day in Russia. Turn down uh, a couple a couple more notches. And then more. Go ahead. Yep. Wow. Okay, because this is lower than it's ever been for me too. Back up, back up, back up. Higher, higher, higher. <laughs> now nah. to the Yeti mic. I see That's it's not the, bad. It's your cable, dude. Yeah, the cable. Yeah, so, we'll work on that later. Go ahead. We'll get our crack staff on that one too. Uh, we'll get our IT staff on that one, Teddy. Yeah. All right. So I, I totally forgot where I, where I was, but it goes back. We don't know what we don't know. Yeah. But Sarah Rosinski, and that's somebody you also know, and she's been oh, a guest yeah. in here. Sarah has written a book. I love it. And it's in it's the book is called Unflubify Your Writing, and yours truly over there edited it. Uh, but what I like about it, and it covers all of what Todd was talking about, and that's the insure, insure, and effect, effect, it's and it's and there, 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 and you name it. Yeah. But it's written 
in a way that I write my column. It's not written as f- for a PhD thesis no. kind of or whatever dissertation and all that stuff. It's written for guys like you and me yeah. that, that wonder about that. And what she does is she gives us memory hooks, ways yes. Yes. to remember what's right and what isn't. It's what is it? 20 bucks. If that you get it on Amazon, it's called unflubify your writing. And I'll, I'll, I'll get her to give us a 50% commission on <laughs> just kidding, but I'll go get the URL for it. Yeah. Get the URL because, and I love it because for me, I can read that. And for me, it's, it's, it's almost like taking a quiz. I'll look at the, the different words and I'll say, okay, I know what these are. Now I'm going to read what she says to see whether it yeah. is accurate or not. Sarah is wonderful. Yeah. She's brilliant. I was yep. grateful that I was able, and I found very little, by the way, a comma here or there, big whoop. Yeah. Um, the name Unflubify Your Writing is just brilliant. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not a real word. It's pure <laughs> fun. But it I've is. loved, and by the way, for those who are listening, not just the book, but she puts out a, a, a little lesson almost yeah. every day on the same kinds of things. Sometimes she'll bring one in from the book to show you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes she'll create a new one that she didn't get to put in the book, but yeah. she is absolutely wonderful at the English language, all of these words. Um, she's fabulous. I love her to pieces. We're good buddies because we mm-hmm. align very well. Sure. sure. She was on. Yeah. yeah she's done she something was on. Done, a book. Right. She was on also about maybe a year ago. And I've, I've kept in, in reasonable contact with her over the last months in all. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's terrific. It making what? Okay. <laughs> but <laughs> anyway, I find myself <clears throat> and I told her this, she goes, you're not the only one, Randy. I said, I find myself when I see a sign I'm, I'm driving or I'm walking along or I see something in print. And I'll say, aha, mm-hmm. Rosinski needs to see that. And I'll, I'll, I'll send her a little bl- or a photo of it. I'll send her a blurb and I'll say, what do you think of this? And she'll say, well, it's on page 82 in my book. And, and But the idea is that when once we get our antenna up for some of this stuff, we kind of see things. We go, wait a second. I know the proper use in this thing. But the key here is not to necessarily knock on the business person's door. Remember it? Uh, Teddy, I took a picture of the, the local gas station where they were having uh, work on axles and they spelled A-X-L-E apostrophe S. Mm-hmm. You know, nice try, yeah. guys. You don't use an apostrophe to create florals. Nice try. Correct. So yeah. nobody's walked up to them to tell them that. Yeah. Uh, they're afraid that, of what the result will be. Well, they're, they're, oh, there's, they don't like there's what I do. Hey, we still have about 10 minutes left. I, I want to have you, um, not right now, but uh, in a few minutes, give us a I don't know, a few takeaways, some things you want us to I remember. have four, four ways to got yeah. some of those, but we do have a little bit more. The, the key here is how do we eliminate them? How do we eliminate some of these? What are some tips you would have once we think we know what some of these filler were? And I'm not talking the insure, insure. No, the we're talking about um, 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 the, the, the. Correct. The, oh my gosh. Oi, oi, oi. It's how do we eliminate them? How do we practice? How do we identify it? How do we eliminate them or minimize? Find, find a way to record yourself. It is mind blowing. <laughs> Even if you do a Zoom thing and maybe do it yourself and find a way to record your own, listen to it. You can also obviously have a friend be willing to listen to you mm-hmm. and see if, but that's a friendship kind of thing. And that can go south fairly quickly. Recording yourself can help a lot mm-hmm. um, on your cell phone. I'll bet your cell phone has a way to do that, right? To cell record? Do. Yes, I don't yeah. do tech. Cell phones can record, right? They can record text messages. They can record other things. Mm-hmm. Because you won't know until you hear it coming back. I, again, I wasn't that familiar with it until I learned, mm-hmm. looked at the transcriptions, and then realized how often I do the same thing. You're and human. Notice, yeah, notice we're just, human. We do it. We are, and until somebody points it out, mm. we might not be aware of it. Why would we? We've got so much else going on. I got to tell her this, I got to tell her that, I got to make sure I go by this. Oh my gosh, I got to go do that. And what? <laughs> so we're not listening in that. You said something very important right there. What you look for, you'll find. It's like right. buying a red car. On the street, every car all of a sudden is red because your eyes go to what you just bought. Mm-hmm. So if you're aware of, um, 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 
or the, 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 or whatever else like, right? Mm -hmm. You'll start to see it or hear it because it's far, it's now it's taking precedence up here in the ears, the eyes, the mind, and it yeah. will help. So remember my, my lead, my, uh, my, fit, my, my move into the next segment of video is so, I hear it all the time now. And so I'm catching myself saying it and I have to uh, strip it out less often. Susan, you, this is one of the things that I, I love what you said. If you want to find it, you will go look for it. Yeah. And so one of the things I tell people, look, we all have Zoom. We all have you know cell phones with cameras. Record yourself speaking. If you think it's yeah. important enough to do it better, practice doing it before you have to do it on the air or do it live or in front of the president. Um, so here's a question. So here's a, uh, I'm going to rain out, I'll cue it up and then you can take it from here. Don says he talked about uh, his personal style. He likes to use dot, dot, dot as a pause. And when he's writing, it's a style he uses and, or using hyphens as a style to create a space. I, I do that every now and then, not so often. I'm actually minimizing that. He asks, are these a correct way to use those? Is that appropriate in your writing to create Pauls? Not generally in professional writing. Not, and I'm saying generally, I can't legislate that kind of a thing. In comfortable writing, an occasional use of the ellipses, which is what the three dots are called, mm -hmm. sure. We never use a hyphen, however, in place of a dash. A hyphen is meant to connect two parts of a word, a single word mm -hmm. or a phrase, but not that way. You'd want to use a dash, which is either two hyphens next to each other, more than you want to know, or the N dash or the M dash, but not a hyphen. Again, not in most professional writing, most. I'm sure I can find a document somewhere where an occasional use of it would make sense. But the more you do it, the more people wonder what the heck's going on. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't fit. And the last thing I want anyone to read and think is, what the heck is that all about? And forget to read the important information. Because that's your next book. Style. That'll be that'll be your next your first book, I guess. What the heck first. is that all about? We hey, go. we're getting uh, getting a little short on time. Susan Rooks, okay. why don't you, if you would please, give us a few minutes, a couple minutes worth of, of takeaways you'd like for folks to have, and maybe things they can practice and work on. Okay, there yeah. were four ideas that I got from the Toastmasters site this morning as I went on okay. looking to see what somebody else would suggest. And in terms of the oral communication, which is what we're talking about here, the presentations, the first thought would be simply embrace the idea of a pause. P-A-U-S-E, not little things on the dogs. Embrace it. Understand that it's okay to shut up for a few seconds, not maybe three minutes worth, but a few seconds is perfectly acceptable when you're thinking. It's, if you've ever watched sports, and we all have, you realize that the announcers never shut up, and it makes me a lunatic. They don't offer much value, but by golly, they're filling the space with noise, which now you're going to hear because I've just planted that seed. But embrace it. Understand, sure. between thoughts for a moment, it's okay. Shut up for a moment. And then the next one would be slow down. I'm the queen of... Boy, I can talk faster than almost anybody. But if I wanna give you some information and I run my, my words that close, all you're gonna get is noise. So it's deliberate to speak a little more slowly, which also gives your brain a chance to connect to the mouth, which mm -hmm. is a really good thing for having. Know your point. Why are you even doing it? Yeah. What's the point of it? Just to ramble? Unfortunately, if we're not thinking ahead, I want to make these three points at that point or whatever. If we're not clear, the clarity will not be there to the listener who knows nothing, has no idea. I'm coming in because I like her. Yeah, so be sure you know what the point of it is, whether it's a one minute talk or an hour's worth, which is what we were talking about here. And the last one, I had to write these down because I never would have remembered. And something we already talked about, practice. Yeah. Record yourself. There's nothing more. Do it, by the way, do it privately because it can be, it's really embarrassing to realize. And we were talking earlier before we started this and in the emails, this is a tough one to be talking about because we're all three aware that we're 
we're showing how to do it sometimes. <laughs> um, not. Yeah. Okay. Never. Well, right. Yeah. Yeah. Practice. Susan Brooks, thanks for joining us. The Grammar Goddess. Stick around. We've got a couple minutes left. Teddy and I will share some story or two or what we may have learned. I guess I'll start and then I'll throw it to you, Teddy, and you'll do the, the story and introduce our next guest coming up. You tagged at the very end, your fourth point you just gave was practice. And I'll, I don't say quibble with you, but I'll, I'll help make what you did even better. How does that sound? It was great. I and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to ah. help make it even better. Yep. And it's this, it's one thing for us to practice just by ourselves. I can sit here and without having to engage with other people, I could sit here and record my voice talking about my day, talking about how great the Red Sox will be eventually. I could do that. And because I'm focused solely on that one topic that I know about and I'm not nervous. What I would suggest is have a mock interview yeah. where now there's a level of nervousness. They're asking questions, not as not for you to describe what you ate for dinner, which is a factual thing that you can memorize. Instead, when they say, how would you handle a situation like this? And they lay out a scenario, it forces your brain to be somewhat creative. To be able to handle that on the fly, to me, is a lot more difficult than simply recanting or recounting what occurred yesterday. They're both difficult. But if I can do that when I'm eyeballing somebody and keep my train of thought without, uh, uh, that I think takes it to the next level just a little bit. So my encouragement is to practice. Teddy, I know we went long. I apologize. I'll throw it to you and take us home. I'm going to tell you real quick the yeah. importance of, the, of paying attention to grammar and spelling became, I'm going to use the word again, uberly relevant to me when I okay. lost a contract. I lost a business opportunity because I misspelled the name of the company and I misused some other words in the agreement. And the Ooh, lady boy. said to me, you're out of here. I'm not even going to consider you. It was, it, it, was, yeah. it was a huge learning experience for me. Hey, Susan, thank you very much for joining Thanks, us. Susan. Really appreciate it. Good conversations all, as always. Next week, join us when Jen Morris uh, will join us. Jen's going to come in on a conversation called Social seeking and it's about the new style of looking for an exciting opportunity slash the right job for you next oh. wednesday on lunch conversations with randy and teddy and again we're grateful for our sponsor the elder law firm for being a part of our show and sponsor us look up the elder law firm if you need help or ideas or have some questions about elder law issues susan randy take care thank you, thank you. have a great week Thanks, thank brother. you bye-bye